our God is a God of covenant. And we're going to talk about the immense importance of that today because covenant is all about being authentic. It's all about being real. It's all about being genuine. And it's also all about being truthful. If you're leading with authenticity, you're willing to be truthful, no matter what the cost. Jesus was truthful, and he paid the ultimate cost so that we'd have the ultimate life. Numbers 23, 19 says, For God is not a God that he should lie. He's not human, so he doesn't change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act upon it? No. Has he ever promised and not come through? No, he comes through. Authentic. God's the real deal. When God makes a promise to us, he keeps that promise. Covenant. And I'm going to say something today that's theologically maybe something you have never embraced, but I want you to really embrace it. The most important truth contained in the pages of the Bible is the truth of the new covenant of Christ. That's the most important truth in Holy Scripture, the covenant love of Jesus Christ. And that brings us to our verse in Matthew. Jesus was at the Last Supper, and, and he said to them, he said, this is my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. He said, I'm giving it all so that you'll have it all. All that I have in the Father, you'll have as well. God made us a promise, and he kept that promise. And, and if you look at Scripture, you know that 25%, one out of every four verses, basically, or 25% of the Bible is prophecy, and that prophecy revolved around Jesus coming and caring and loving and dying and then being raised and resurrected so that we, uh, we serve a living God, not a dead religion. John 15, 13 says, There is no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friend, that one lays down his life for another. There's no greater love than that. We serve and we care about our emergency responders, and they do that every single day. They put their lives out there so that others might live, so that others would be protected from those things that would come against them. So we really, truly come to understand the full implica implication of new covenant when we discover the most liberating secret in the word of God, and that's the number one truth I'm going to tell you now, is our God is a God of covenant promise. He is authentic. He is genuine. He is real, and he is truthful. And when you come to understand that, you'll understand there's nothing else like that. There's no other belief system, there's no philosophy that compares to the authenticity of the God that we serve. The full implication of the new covenant is the most freeing thing you'll learn. John 8, 36 says, so think of it this way. If the son comes to make you free, you will really be free. It's the secret that was spoken by the apostle Paul in Colossians 1, Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, when you, when you really receive that, when you really come to understand that, when you, you in, take that truth and you put it inside yourself, you'll begin to share that with others and you will be free to be who you really are. You'll be free to understand that you have hope within you, that you can make a significant difference in this world because there's a difference in your life. You've been changed. You'll never be the same once you come to know Christ. So the number one truth is our God is a God of covenant. Number two truth for today is God empowers you to live a life of authenticity through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's important that we have not a dead religion, but a living relationship with a living God, that the Holy Spirit of God empowers us to do what's necessary. There are times that we're called upon to do things that are difficult, but they're important, and it's really Important to have the power of God, the love of God, the hope of God, the faith of God. A.D. Betozer uh, got this great mystery written out, and, and I thought it was really great the way he wrote it. It was in Roots of Righteousness. He said, well, a real Christian's an odd number anyway. He feels supreme love for one who he's never seen, takes, talks familiarly with every day to someone he cannot see, expects to go to heaven on the virtue of another, empties himself in order to be full, admits he is wrong so he can be declared right, goes down in order to get up, is strong when he is weakest, richest when he is poorest, happiest when he feels worst, he dies so he can live, forsakes in order to have, gives away so he can keep, sees the invisible, hears the inaudible, and knows that which passes knowledge. Christians are meant to be different, and we're in good company. 
Christ was different. Can you imagine Christ and all his glorious riches actually coming down and dwelling through his Holy Spirit and through the Spirit of God in our lives right now? That's what A.W. A. Tozer said. And it's true, we are meant to be different. We're not supposed to look like the world. We're in the world, but we're not of it because God's taken us and said, hey, I've got a plan for your life. I've got something I want to do with you that's going to change your life and change those around you. God's goal is really in all respects to make us like Jesus Christ. God's at work in our lives. He's sovereign. He has a plan for us and he wants to fulfill it. He's busy changing lives in ways that sometimes are a little bit mysterious to us, but when we see the end results, we're amazed by what he can do in a life fully given to him. We are actually invested in the amazing fact of our having a living relationship with a living Savior through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have freedom from sin and degradation by being bought with a price on the cross of Calvary's hill and called a child of God. We need to move past dead religion based on the lies of the enemy of our souls. A commonly held belief is that God wants to keep us from having fun, that he wants to restrict us from having a good time. Who would want to live a life full of being told what you can't do? We put God in the context of shall nots. That's not an idea that really dates back to Genesis. Except there was something that happened in the Garden of Eden. Eve was told by the serpent, Serpent's talking to the woman. Is it true that God has forbidden you to eat fruits from the trees of the garden? Eve says, no, serpent. God said, we're free to eat the fruit from the trees in the garden. We're granted access to any variety and all amounts of fruit, with one exception, the fruit from the tree in the center of the garden. God instructed us not to eat or touch the fruit of that tree, or we would die. Serpent, die. No, he'll not die. God is playing games with you. Verse 5. The truth is that God knows the day that you eat the fruit from the tree, you are awakened to some powerful thing inside of you and become like him, possessing knowledge of both good and evil. Now, here's the implication. Here's what the lie was. It's obvious and it's insidious. Satan's claiming that God's trying to keep us from something good and we should trust the enemy of our souls. And simply, he just simply wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But let me be clear here. God knows actually what's good for us. And the enemy tries to tell you, hey, this is good. But in the end, it causes death. God says, hey, this is good. In the end, it causes life. But it's not something that hasn't happened before. It happens every day out there. But we can be those change agents that come in and say, hey, wait a minute. I tried that. It didn't work. Let's try this. It did work. God can change your life. He can give you a new hope. He can give you life beyond what you'd ever imagine. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to do good and not to evil. Plans to give you a hope and plans to give you a future. You see, the heart of God is quite different from the heart of this world. The heart of God says, I've got something really amazing for you. I'm going to give you a name that if you knew who you were, you would be amazed. But I know who you are and rooted and grounded me. I'm going to cause you to become everything that you were created to be because I love you that much and I want you to shed that love with others. That's the kind of God that we serve, an amazing God. Jesus came and called out the religious people for their empty doctrines, rules, and religious rituals. They they weren't in the best interest of the people. They were doing it for themselves. It was all about what they could get out of it. And God says, no, it's what you can give out of me that I want. We're meant to embrace a life-changing experience of being intimately connected with Christ at the very core of our being, for that is authenticity. Authentic Christianity is being intimately connected with Christ at the very core of our being. How are we to be authentic? How are we to lead as Christ led? Well, Christ had an intimate relationship with the Father. We need to seek such a relationship with God and the Father. God wants to help us. He wants us to ask him. He says in Matthew 7, 7, Just ask and it will be given to you. Seek after it and you will find. Continue to knock at the door and it will be open for you. You see, it's not that God's trying to keep something from us as the enemy lied in the garden. Actually, he's trying to give something to us. But there are trinkets. There are those things that will divert us. We need to keep our eye on the prize. So the number two truth for today, trust God and identify someone you can be accountable to and trust with your life. Confess your sins, your failings, and your shortcomings, and then let the Holy Spirit empower you to be changed. You see, if we're trying to hide all the time, if we're trying to keep something inside that God's trying to get out, we need to come to a place where we can trust, where we can put it out there knowing that we're going to be loved, accepted, and forgiven, that someone's going to say, hey, let me come alongside you and walk you through that. I've been there, and I can walk you through it. 
James 5, 16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. You see, God really wants us to have an inner healing in our lives. He doesn't want us to be carrying the pain of the past. The earnest prayers of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. As senior pastor Landon has said, the enemy cannot hold someone in bondage who tells on himself. We have an awesome men's group here at Covenant. We meet monthly, and I really encourage you to find someone you can trust, someone who will be there for you, someone you can share with, and you know they'll have your back. It's incredibly important. Yep. Number three, be fruitful. God expects us to be fruitful. Luke 6, each tree comes to be known by its own fruit, for figs are not gleaned out of briars, neither are bunches of grapes gathered from their thorn bushes. When you're authentic, it becomes known to others. It, it's noticed. There is a quote attributed to St. Francis de Assisi. He says, preach the gospel at all times. And if necessary, use words. In other words, your life should be that gospel. You should be the person that they look at and say, you know, what is that kindness? What is that generosity? Why are they by my side right now? They could be doing something else, but yet they chose to be here. I wonder what's different in their life. Do what you say you'll do. Keep your word, because God kept his to us. Again, God's not a man that he lies, nor a son of man that he changes his mind. When he speaks to you, he's going to act. When he promises you, he's going to fulfill. Because he's, the theological term is immutable. He cannot change. He's a loving, caring God. I wouldn't be standing here today if it were not for Wayne. I would not be standing here for today if it were not for Wayne. Because Wayne is an authentic Christian. Thanksgiving 1995. Carol Ann and I were raising four small children. And I was working hard, but her means were hardly being met. Some people knocked on a door, people that I didn't even know. And I was in the bedroom at the time. It was the Ashleys, Wayne Ashley and his family. They brought our family a Thanksgiving meal in 1984. I didn't even know how they found out that we had a need at that time. But they did. And Carol Ann came to get me out of the bedroom, but I wouldn't come out. You see, I was too ashamed. I was too prideful. Ashamed that I wasn't adequately providing for the family, not feeling really good about myself. Not that I didn't want to provide, and not that I wasn't working really hard, but obviously I had some things I needed to deal with. Poor Carol. Dealing with a thick skulled male. <laughs> Graciously accepted the help. And the Ashleys kept on being real, they kept on loving our family. And God graciously dealt with my heart. Being really authentic here, really real, just being really open. Because I want you to know that we all go through times of undulation, times of up and down. Times when you're at your best, times when you're at your weakest. But you're never, ever alone. God never, ever, 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 ever gives up on you. God's constantly waiting with open arms. When you turn around, he's right there to say, hey, come on. Let's deal with life. Let's get past this. And there's another story that goes along with that. I ended up uh, pastoring a ministry that Wayne was involved with as head of the ministry. And God called us and he did some amazing things for the next 10 years in a mission called Go Missions. But I don't want you to ever put ministers or pastors on a pedestal. This is not fair to them and it's not fair to you. See, we're all human. Different callings, but we have lived real life. We have been there. When we come alongside you, oftentimes we can understand. And if we can't, we'll find someone who can. But I know that Jesus does. And we will introduce Jesus to you and say, hey, here's the real God. And here how, here's how he's been real in my life. And I'll have your back because he had mine. Because somebody walked before me in authentic Christianity. So number two principle for today is God empowers you to live a life of authenticity through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You really do need to have a relationship with Christ. You really do need to have the love of Christ inside of you. Ephesians 3, 16 through 20. These are powerful verses. Father, out of your honorable and glorious riches, strengthen your people. Right in that first verse, it says God has glorious, honorable, incredible riches. He wants to give you a full life. 
Out of your honorable and glorious riches, strengthen your people. Fill their souls with the power of your spirit so that through the faith of the anointed one who resides in their hearts, the Lord Jesus Christ, may love be rich soil where their lives take root. Isn't that incredible verses? May it be the bedrock where their lives are founded so together with all your people, they will have the power to understand that the love of Christ is infinitely long, wide, high, deep, surpassing everything anyone previously experienced. God, may your fullness flood to their entire beings. God wants you to be hope to those that you meet. Verse 20 is the doxology of praise to the one with power that is beyond our understanding. Verse 20 says, Now to the God who can do so many more awe-inspiring things, immeasurable things, greater things than you could ever imagine through the power at work in us. See the second part of that doxology, verse 20, in the power at work in us. You see, we're his hands and we're his feet. <laughs> verse 21, to him be all the glory in the church and in Jesus the anointed from this generation and the next forever and ever, amen. And that's why we praise God here. Authentic Christian leaders will reach the world around them with the generous love, acceptance, and forgiveness of God. And they've already experienced it. So of course they can give it. And if they can't give it, it's because they don't have it because they haven't experienced it. And that's the difference between religion and relationship. His classmates called him the dumb ox because he was overweight. He was very serious and usually he was silent. Historians called him the angelic doctor. The Catholic Church came to call him a saint. He was the most influential theologian of the 13th century. If his mother had had her way, the world would never have heard of him as she strongly opposed his studying theology. She even had him confined to a castle for over a year to attempt to keep him from joining a religious order or becoming a man of the cloth. His life mission, however, was to reconcile the Christian faith with human reason and intellectually prove the existence of God. He wanted to intellectually prove the existence of God. That was his heart's calling. Of the many theological books he wrote, his final book, the Summa Theologica of Theology from 1275 to 1273, is considered his greatest and most important work. Amazingly, Thomas Aquinas was unable to finish the third part of that book. The first part was on God. The second part was on the moral life of man. And the third part was on Christ. He completed the first two sections and was deep into writing the final section of Christ when it's believed that he came face to face with Christ. Following that spiritual encounter, here's what Thomas Aquinas said. I have seen that which makes all I have written and taught look so small in me. My writing days are over. Hear what he said, I've met Christ. It's so incredible, so amazing. He's, he's so awe-inspiring, so glorified. I can't even find words to explain the God that I know. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. This guy was sharp. This guy wrote one of the most incredible books ever written on theology, and yet he came. It's not about just understanding God. It's not about just reason and God, it's about a relationship. And when I met that relationship, I can't even put it into words. Once Thomas Aquinas had come face to face, his life was totally, completely, and forever changed. Like Francis Assisi said, preach the gospel at all times, and it's necessary to use words. Sometimes there just aren't any words to explain the love of Christ. Pastor Ray C. Stedman, former pastor of Peninsula Bible Church, once said, all human pursuits, even the study of religion and theology, are mere pale imitations once you come into the presence of the great reality of Jesus himself. The Christian life begins with a living relationship with the living Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, everybody's qualified. God loves everybody. If anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old's gone and the new has come. It's the same bond that unites all believers in covenant with one another. We believe God has called us to expand his kingdom by sharing the message of his covenant, of his covenant love, acceptance, and forgiveness. The ministry of reconciliation through Christ and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Our heart is to be an authentic community of Christ followers living out the spirit-filled life together. 
As we experience God's presence, grow in the knowledge of the Bible and faithfully serve one another, we grow in community and challenge one another in a relationship, challenge one another in a relationship to live that life that points to Christ and his love for all of us. That's our challenge today. Our heart is to be an authentic community of believers, living out the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. You've got all kinds of examples like that. Mother Teresa going to the slums of Calcutta, taking a, a stick and, and her chalkboard was the mud and, and teaching the poorest of the poorest young girls. Think of George Mueller who started orphanages with simple faith and prayer and having his needs met every day by the miraculous power of God or General Booth going into the slums of London and helping the oppressed women and children. Think about it, all the glorious plans that God has for victory over evil, and we are that hope. We're the ones that have to stand in that gap. We're the ones that would have to step up. All his plans for future glory are invested in the fact of having a living relationship with us and us having a living relationship with the living God. You are God's hope for this world through the love that he has for you. So truth number one, our God is a God of covenant. He's authentic, he is real, he is genuine, he is truthful. So speak that truth in love. Truth number two for today is God's empowering love for you to live a life full of authenticity through the empowering Holy Spirit. Embrace the Holy Spirit of God. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to make you all that you were created to be. Truth number three, you will know authentic Christian leaders by their fruit. Be generous and go out and do some good. You come in here today to get strengthened, but you go out there to the mission field to do some good tomorrow. Galatians 6, 9, and 10. May we never tire of doing what is good and right before our Lord, because in his season, we shall bring in a great harvest if we can just persist. So seize the opportunity the Lord gives you to do good things and be a blessing to everyone, especially to those who are in the family of God. Yeah. May God bless you. I wanted him to speak on this, number one, because we need to hear from Pastor Mel, and I like hearing from Pastor Mel. Uh, but number two, this is an authentic man. This is a man of incredible character and integrity. And where you have, uh, the Lord has given you grace to master an area, you're anointed to overcome and speak in that area. God has given me areas of anointing, and God has given Pastor Mel an area of anointing, of authentic leadership, integrity, character. And and uh, I'm so thankful for him uh, to be a part of this church, uh, him and his wonderful wife, and thankful that they get to go to Israel in January. They're going to go to Israel. And uh, just... In, in, it's a, it's a testimony to what God can do in your life. God can do anything. You got a dream, you got a desire, get to your core. I love what Pastor Mel said. Your authenticity comes from your uh, uh, relationship with the Lord, that deep centered relationship with the Holy Spirit, with God in your life. And that's where the authenticity comes from. And we need that in our city. We need that in our nation. We need that in this world. We need authentic Christians. Uh, I could do a, a whole, we could teach a whole message on hypocrites, you know, and, and, and hypocrites, we could help paint a great picture. Hypocrites are not people who are trying to do something and fail. Hypocrites are the ones who declare you better live this way, but behind closed doors intentionally live another way. And it's Christians are the people who are saying, Hey, look, I know I'm not perfect. Uh, or, uh, cr Christians are wonderful people who are trying to do who or what's right, trying to live with integrity, trying to live, may not be perfect, may mess up, but that's integrity. That's character. It's owning up to the fact that I am going to make mistakes and I am not going to be perfect. That's authentic leadership. Authentic leadership is I messed up today or I messed up yesterday. Or, hey, I yelled at my family during the holidays. Come on, everybody raise your hand right now. Well, we, we have this, you know, we, we've got to be authentic with who we are. And as Pastor Mel said, and I say it over and over and over and over again, what can the devil do with somebody who tells on themselves? Yeah. Nothing. Can't do anything with them because he operates in the secret. He operates in the dark. He operates where you want to hide things. And when you bring it all into the light, he can't do anything with you because your heart is with God and your life is with the Lord. Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. You gotta lay everything you value before the Lord. Say, okay, God, it all is with you. I wanna be an authentic leader. 
before you. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes? Lord, we thank you, God, for today. And we thank you for the opportunity, God, Lord, to seek you. For the opportunity, God, Lord, to chase after you. God, Lord, for the opportunity to receive the message of authenticity into our life. We are gonna live an authentic lifestyle. Not a, not a perfect lifestyle, a transparent lifestyle. A lifestyle that's vulnerable and open and honest. And Lord, we thank you that through that honesty, we're gonna find tremendous connection to who you are because you dwell in the truth. Your spirit is the truth and the truth is what sets us free. And Lord, we thank you, God, Lord, that your truth is in us and we're gonna live a life of truthfulness. We're not gonna hide anything anymore. We're gonna let it go. And with every head bowed and every eye closed in here, if there's anyone here that needs to deal with some, some hidden things, I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand and I'm not gonna ask you to confess it out loud, but I know that there are some things that we have to deal with and say, okay, God, I'm gonna let it go. I'm, I'm not gonna deal with it. Maybe it's something I need to confess to my family, my, my spouse, my kids, um, uh, my leader, my pastor, my mentor, uh, a coworker, but I need to get it off my chest and I need to first confess to you. And I need to repent to you and receive forgiveness because I'm going to live in the light. I'm going to live authentic. And if that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to pray for you. And as I pray, I want you to just begin to confess and repent and let go. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God, for everyone in here and everyone streaming online. If there's some things that we need to deal with, some unconfessed sins, God, some hidden things, God, that we tried to bury, that we tried to push away, that we tried to just do away with, God, and ignore, God, we're gonna bring it into the light and we're gonna face it, God, because we're gonna surrender it to you and we're gonna give our sins to you. We're gonna give our transgressions to you. We're gonna give our iniquity to you, God. Lord, we're gonna surrender Surrender it all because, Lord, what, the devil can't work with me. The devil can't harm me and hurt me when I bring it all into the light. And so, Lord, I thank you, God. We're bringing it into the light. We're going to speak truth over our life, and we're going to be honest and truthful. We're going to be Christians who live with integrity and character. We're going to be men and women who live authentically before everybody and before God the Most High. And, Lord, we thank you, God, Lord, that you're going to help us. Your Spirit is going to help us. You're gonna empower us to do that in Jesus' name. Now with every head bowed and every eye closed, I, I never wanna leave without giving an opportunity for anybody in here who wants to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If you're streaming online, if you're in this house and you wanna declare Jesus as Lord of your life, the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that's when salvation comes. That's when eternity comes. He's going to come to your aid and come to your rescue. And if that's you and you want to surrender your life to God, not just know of Jesus, but surrender to Jesus, submit to Jesus, believe in that heart of yours and confess with your own words that Jesus is the Lord of your life. If that's you, with no one looking around, I want you to raise your hand right now. If you want to rededicate your life or dedicate, thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, God, for the hands that are up in this house and online, the hearts that are open and ready to receive what you have for them. With everyone in here, I want you to uh, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord, as my Savior, as my Heavenly Father. I submit to you. I surrender to you. I am forever yours, and I am saved. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Let's give God some praise, Covenant Church. Come on.